Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. Today with us, we have Fedora Linux 42. This is a beta version. It just came out and I really can't wait to make a video about this. Fedora is one of my favorite distributions and so it is for quite a lot of people. So without wasting further time and also before, I mean, I can't forget to tell you that 42 is the perfect number in the entire universe. Let's just dive right in. All right, if you got the 42 reference, do let me know. It's a very, very famous pop culture reference. And yeah, let's just talk about Fedora. So if you don't know what it looks like, this is it. New wallpaper, that's always a good sign. These are dynamic workspaces. You have the dock at the bottom. You get the uh, pills at the top so you can change workspaces. And you'll notice that they do change uh, the pill becomes a dot and dot becomes a pill. Same thing, right? Before jumping into Fedora Linux, I just want to show you the new installer because this looks really cool. The Anaconda team has worked up a new web UI and it is really amazing. We're not gonna, actually going to install the operating system right now. I'm just going to show it to you guys and then we're going to quit it and continue on with the video. Okay, so English United States, that's pretty good. Go to next virtual block device. Uh, you can change the destination. You can use the entire disk. So uh, you can rescan devices. That's pretty cool. We already have this. Uh, this is inside a virtual machine, by the way. So uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I know some of you guys hate it and it doesn't show the animations properly. So that's my bad. Secure your data using disk-based encryption only applies to new partitions. So you can encrypt. I'm not going to encrypt my data, but uh, you can if you want to. And it's recommended nowadays. And last, you get the uh, you get a little bit of summary for your installation. So you're go you are going to install Fedora Linux 42 Workstation Edition pre-release, English United States. English uh, installation type is going to be using the entire disk, and this is the storage partitions that are created by default. So one gigabytes of ext4 boot partition, another uh, 20 gigs of butterfs sub volume. This is going to be the uh, root partition, and home partition will have another 20 gigs. Of, I mean, this is not different. This is uh, this is a single partition VDA3. Uh, this is going to be a ButterFS as well. So this is the same. So two partitions in total. You can erase data and install, but we're not going to do that. We're just going to quit, uh, quit the installation, and we're going to continue on with the tour. All right. So here you can see Fedora Linux 42 enters public beta testing, and we're just going to grab a few excerpts from this page. Okay, so it does come with the upcoming Linux 6.14 kernel. So you can see over here, if you go to the settings and let's just give it a few seconds to open up. And if you go to system about, you can see that this is Fedora Linux 42. Uh, system details, you can go to this and you can see that it is running on Linux 6.14 kernel and it is using Wayland as the windowing system. All right, so moving on, uh, Fedora Linux 42 also promises RPM support for creating users and groups according to the configuration provided in sysusers D unification of user bin and uh, user slash S bin, DNF RPM copy on write enablement for all variants and support for firewall ID to use IPv6 RP filter equals lose by default for Fedora workstation installations. That's pretty good. Now the upcoming Linux 42 release will also introduce the SDL3 transition and Wayland by default for SDL apps, as well as the new GNOME well-being feature that will be shipping with the upcoming GNOME 48 desktop environment series. Now this isn't ready as of now, so I can't show it to you guys. I'm sorry for that, but this is going to come up and it's going to be pretty good. And you guys already saw the installer. It looked pretty good. Now the upcoming release also promises support for more Meepy non-USB cameras found on x86 laptops and tablets. Support for simple DRM kernel mode setting by default for the Plymouth Boot Splash. Improved EDK2 security and switch from Squash FS to EROFS for the Fedora Linux Live Media. It also promises optimized binaries for AMD64, a new Fedora Cosmic Edition that we're also going to review, so watch out for that, and Compose Fs by default for Fedora Atomic Desktops and Auto Updates by default for Fedora Kanoid. Fedora Kanoid is basically uh, kind of like uh, the, the SteamOS image. You can't really uh, mess with the system. I, for I forget the name of it, but uh, you can't really mess with the system. Anything you do is temporary. Uh, you can obviously turn that off, but by default, it's not. Uh, it's uh, it's a non-mutable type of operating systems. So that is pretty good. 
uh, for, for a lot of people. And then you also get under the hood improvements to DNF5 package manager with a new logic that will remove expired and obsolete repository keys from the system. The latest upstream release of Python setup tools and the newest version of Ruby uh, to make Fedora Linux the superior Ruby development platform. So all of this is well and good, plenty of new releases, but let's just go through uh, the settings and we're gonna talk about a little bit of the updates in the software system in Fedora. All right, so uh, we already saw the system. That's pretty good. You also get region and language, date and time, users, remote desktop, secure shell, access, all that good stuff. Inside accessibility, one of the most important parts in any operating system is you can always show the accessibility menu, so this is pretty good. I would like to actually have that turned on, just as a reminder, but let's go through these settings. And so we have seeing, so inside we get screen reader, high contrast, on off shapes, animation effects, large text, cursor size, so you can change the cursors. Let's just change it to this for the video so that it's easier for you guys to see and follow along. And sound keys and always show scroll bars. This is also good, always show scroll bars. See, if you turn that off, it's gonna be like this. And if you turn it on, it's gonna be like this. So that's pretty good. Now, for hearing, you have over amplification, which by the way, some laptops do really need over amplification because most of the laptops are made for Windows and they do have drivers built in or you can install them from the laptop's uh, website. They do a lot of uh, tweaking to make it sound really good, but when you install Linux, what happens is your volume gets reduced by a lot and then you actually kind of need over amplification. You don't need to go to the extreme, but something like 125, 150%. You kind of need that on most laptops anyway, so that's pretty good. That's a pretty good thing to have. You can also enable visual alerts and you can have it flash the entire screen or the entire window. We're not gonna do that right now. For typing, you have screen keyboard, enable by keyboard, cursor blinking, blink speed, a lot of things which are gonna be extremely uh, useful for a lot of people. And for typing assist, you have repeat keys, uh, sticky keys, slow keys, bounce keys, uh, I remember when I was little, I used to uh, like play games and stuff and I used to press shift for like five times in Windows and then it would just turn on sticky keys uh, or it would, just, it would just give the prompt. And I, I used to get so much scared. Like, what have I done? My dad's gonna kill me when he gets home because I was little and I didn't know if I was messing up my computer or stuff, but I actually, I eventually figured everything out and it was fine, it was totally fine. You do get pointing and clicking as well, so you can use mouse key, so you can use numeric keypad to move your mouse pointer, that's pretty good. Locate the pointer by pressing left control. This I actually think is gonna be very useful for a lot of people. Activate windows on hover, this is also good. Double click delay, simulated secondary click, secondary click by holding down the primary mouse button. Not gonna enable that, but if you need it, uh, that's it. That's pretty good. Hover click also is available. And for zoom, you can magnify the entire screen. You can change the factor, magnifier view, extend outside screen edges, lots of things. You can invert the colors, you can show crosshairs. That's pretty good stuff. Uh, network is standard Bluetooth. You're not gonna have any because this is inside a virtual machine. Displays, I can show you. The only important thing is you do get, uh, how do you say this? What's it called? It's called, Fractional scaling, uh, actually, yeah. So you do get fractional scaling. This is actually pretty useful in some Linux distros. You can just go from 100 to 200% and that's not really that useful. So for example, I wouldn't do 125, but just to show you guys, this is 125 and I think it doesn't look that bad. Maybe I'll just keep it for the video so that it's uh, better for you guys to see, but uh, I like to keep it at 100%. But if you want to, you always have the option to change this. Sound, pretty much standard, nothing to really discuss. And then power is one of the places where actually there have been improvements. So uh, you do see the performance balanced and power savers with three modes, automatic screen blank. And by the way, this is running on GNOME 48, if I didn't mention that earlier. And uh, I think GNOME 48 is still in beta. So when the two launches together, GNOME 48 and Fedora 42, you're also gonna get a battery charge limiter. So for example, you can set it to say, uh, stop charging at 80%. And if you have your laptop plugged in all the time, it's not gonna degrade the life of your battery um, as much as it would have if it always was stuck at 100%. So that's pretty good. 
Now you do get multitasking, so you have hot corners, active screen edges, pretty much standard stuff that you already know. Hot corners, you uh, put your cursor near to one of the edges and it does something. Active screen edges is you can snap windows on any side you want to. By the way, I set the color to yellow. It looks pretty good, by the way. And you also get dynamic workspaces. So automatically it removes empty workspaces. When you uh, remove a window from a workspace, it would, the workspace would just entirely disappear. You can also set it to have a fixed number of workspaces, which I don't really think is necessary. Dynamic works pretty good, but you do you. Workspaces on primary display only is the default option for multi-monitor support, but you can also change it to workspaces on all displays if that's your jam. And for app switching, you can include apps from all workspaces, which is the default behavior. Now let's go to our favorite tab. Uh, I am guilty of having visited this tab just before recording. I couldn't uh, control myself. I did change the color to yellow, like I said, and I think it looks pretty good. We do get a good amount of wallpapers. I think we've seen a lot of these before, and I think uh, I'm, I'm gonna stick to this wallpaper. It looks really good. Let's just change it to dark mode and yellow pops even more in dark mode. So I think the wallpaper actually does look pretty good. And so moving on to apps, you do get default apps. So you can't change, I think, because you don't really have any other uh, alternatives available. And then you could also do things with removable media. You can uh, have options for media auto start, and then you can change the options to, uh, for if you, if you insert a DVD, you can have it open directly with videos, or you could just do nothing. So these are some of the things, I think uh, these were there for a long time, but even then, if you are new to Fedora, I'm going through a little bit, just so you get to know the uh, operating system a little bit better. And then you do get to enable do not disturb and have lock screen notifications, and notifications for each apps are turned on by default. You can just go ahead and turn off the notifications if you really want to, and then everything just kind of goes away on its own. Next up is search, so you can have include app, you can include app provided search results as well. This is included by default. Search is incredibly powerful uh, in GNOME. This is really good. Uh, I don't need to demonstrate it to you guys, but you can search for many things, uh, files, folders, uh, apps, and it would just pop up immediately. And you can see software and weather are turned off. You could turn them on by, you could turn them on if you want to, and that would be pretty good. You can also have uh, different accounts linked. I think we already know that. And then we do have file sharing or media sharing that are turned off uh, right now, but you could just turn them on and you can share files from your uh, host to another device. That's pretty good. Mouse and keyboard touchpad. I think uh, these are really not that necessary to show to you guys. Uh, they're pretty good. Now let's move on to the actual uh, software package. So this is gonna be software. And as you can see, it looks really beautiful. It hasn't changed. And this is the latest. So everything like boxes, calculator, calendar, camera, it's all in uh, 48 beta. And you can see we get beautiful cards over here for different apps. You do get categories and you do get uh, editor's choice, new and updated, and also have other categories. I always like this the best. In terms of performance, I think Cosmic, uh, App Store is the best, but when it comes to looks, I don't think anybody can beat GNOME software. I said it. It looks pretty good. And what you could do is uh, you could go to software repositories and let's just give it a second. So you can enable flat packs. So Fedora flat packs are enabled. And as you can also see, packages Fedora open H264 is enabled. Uh, mirrors are Fedora test updates. Updates are all enabled. And Linux vendor firmware service is enabled and third party services, uh, third party repositories are also enabled. So the first time you open software, it's gonna ask you to, do you wanna turn on the third party repositories or do you just wanna have it disabled? You can ignore it or you can enable it. Enabling this is a pretty good idea. And you also have Flat Hub, Google Chrome, RPM Fusion, non-free NVIDIA driver, non-free stream Steam. So all of these are enabled out of the box and that is something which is pretty good. It just takes the takes the hassle out of using Linux a little bit. And I think that helps a lot, especially for newer users. Even if you're not a new user, I mean, at the end of the day, if something goes bad and you just, uh, you wanna reinstall Fedora, you don't wanna have to enable, you don't wanna have to configure everything by yourself. And this is a pretty good thing to have been done on its own. Speaking of reinstall, the UI for install just also provides a reinstall Fedora. So in case something goes kaboom, you can always use that to 
I have a new installation ready. Now, I didn't personally explore that, if it keeps all your options or if it just completely wipes everything out and had does a fresh reinstall, but uh, keep an eye out for that option because that's a pretty good thing to have. Let's just go to one of the apps, uh, for example, Tangram. I'm not really sure what it is, but you can see that it does mention FlatHub. So this is directly coming from FlatHub and you're always gonna get the uh, latest and greatest software when it comes to installing things from FlatHub. So uh, you have a little bit of descriptions. I don't think the picture is gonna load anytime soon because this is inside a virtual machine. You do have download size and safety features and what it's gonna work best on. Then you do get the uh, age rating as well, version history, community result, a uh, little bit of links to go to and the reviews and also other apps by the same developer. So this is a really comprehensive page. I really like the layout of how everything is in GNOME software. I just really can't appreciate it enough. I, I, I'm in love with this. And then you also get uh, a whole suite of apps. I mean, you don't get a whole lot. So you do get Fedora Media Writers so if you want to have a USB drive ready to install in other systems. You also get System Monitor, you get the LibreOffice and you do get utilities, but nothing to overwhelm you. Uh, simple things really, if you want, you can install other things uh, from the GNOME Software Manager. That's always there. This is a new terminal. Uh, this is not console, this is terminal. And if you are looking for GNOME specific changes, by the way, uh, I already made a video about that, GNOME 48. I'm not sure how many changes trickled down to this, but ultimately you're gonna get some of those. For example, in calendar, if you want to create a new event, uh, it's a little bit better. You can schedule it for uh, all day or start, ends, repeat. You can add a reminder, you can add notes. So this creating event dialog is a little bit better. You also get triple buffering in GNOME. So that's something which is pretty good. It helps the entire system be very responsive and smooth. And you're not gonna see the smoothness in a VM, but I promise you it's there you also get gnome well-being now gnome well-being is not currently available on my system as you can see it's not here but uh, if you are familiar with Android or iPhone iOS you know what digital well-being is and even though it's not as fully fleshed out as those it does show you um, your screen time and you can limit your screen time. You can turn your screen to grayscale if you want to. So a little bit of functionality is there. It's a good first step, I really like it. And you also get global keyboard shortcuts in uh, in GNOME. So for example, if you are in other apps and then you have conflicting shortcuts, so, and you do want to use the uh, global shortcut, so that's not going to happen. Your global shortcut, the shortcut for GNOME is going to be the one that's going to be executed. I'm not really sure about how that's going to happen, but uh, I believe I said it correctly. Please correct me down in the comments if I am just saying just wrong things. Okay, and I think with that, we come to the end of this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Fedora, as always, is a beautiful operating system. And with that, love you guys. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.